I'm Andre Huey and this is St. Martin Island Time TV News. St. Martin Island Time TV News takes time out to pay respect to the founder of SXM Island Time website and executive producer of this newscast, Samuel Allen Jr., who passed away recently. We pay tribute to the man who was the visionary behind this news website and this newscast. The gendarmes on Friends and Martin have opened up a double homicide investigation. On Tuesday, May 10, 2016, Patrick Lescove was shot twice in his head in his vehicle near the beach Grands Cass in cul-de-sac St. Martin. On Wednesday morning, July 13, around 9 a.m., his mother, Francois, was shot three times in the parking lot of Leader Price Supermarket in Hope Estate. A judicial investigation was quickly opened and the investigations carried out by the detectives identified two people. One is being charged with organizing and paying for carrying out the murder. The second suspect is one who actually shot the two victims. On the morning of Thursday, October 20th, the two suspects were arrested at their homes by the Peloton intervention of the Republican Guard and the platoon of the surveillance and intervention of the gendarmerie in St. Martin. They were immediately placed in custody, faced with various elements of the investigations. The arrested persons quickly confirmed their guilt in the alleged acts. It's both good and bad news for the government of St. Martin this week regarding its finances. While it announced receiving dividends from the central bank at 9.2 million guilders, the government will not be able to borrow due to fall in revenue projections. I also like to report that the dividends from the central bank to the tune of 9.2 million has been received, which is, of course, welcome news. Uh, and as I reported before, uh, as far as casinos are concerned, the casinos, uh, according to reports I received from the island receiver, uh, have paid down substantially on their arrears and have all signed agreements for monthly payments going forward. So that too is on track. The CFC wrote its mid-year report on the financial situation of St. Martin and identified that the income, the revenues we had projected for 2016 is not keeping track with what has been projected. The economic, uh, worldwide economic decline, uh, loss of cruise ships, uh, decline in payment of TOT because of less business activity has had its impact on revenues for this year. Um, as a result, the CFC reported to the Kingdom government that the budget 2016 no longer meets the norms of the Kingdom law on supervision. And as a result, um, they recommended that St. Martin uh, no longer is in a position to borrow. The letter written by the CFC to the Kingdom government is one that I do not support, I do not agree with. Uh, they do not take into consideration information that we have provided, including the expectation of the payment of the dividend from the central bank. Not only that, but the other windfall that will be coming in is from the amassed revenues from water reserves from GBE, for which there is a fixed proposal on the table. And hopefully next week that will be finalized. That will also produce another 17 million guilders in income. Notwithstanding this information, the CFT disregarded all this information, wrote to the Kingdom government, and the result that has had is that the 26 million guilders that we had for a rollover of the debt going back to 10, 10, 10, 
that the kingdom government decided that they no longer would subscribe to a rollover of that 26 million uh, because it would constitute a new loan, but instead uh, offered to extend the existing 26 million guilders loan for a period of seven years at an attractive interest rate of 0.5%, uh, and the first two years, no payments. The controversy surrounding the appointment of the rector of the long-awaited St. Martin Tourism Authority has taken a new turn. No decision has yet been taken on the official appointment of Rolando Bryson as head of the SDA, who had signed an offer letter and was supposedly appointed to the position. But according to Minister of Tourism Ingrid Arundel this week, Bryson's appointment is on hold, awaiting advice from the Advisory Council and SDA's legal team. The uh, regarding the St. Martin Tourism Authority, this authority was a highly anticipated and long-awaited entity. The situation as it is now, as you know, the interim director received a letter stating his uh, that he was chosen to be the one to head this entity. However, due to many, um, let's say, publicity interference, we have decided to have legal vet the look at the articles of incorporation and see how we should move forward. Another uh, step that has been taken is to uh, prepare a service letter agreement where the funds that are allotted to the St. Martin Bureau will be transferred to the SDA. These two uh, requests are presently at the Legal Affairs Department for advice and once the advice is given, we, I will inform or whoever will inform the public as to the way moving forward. Finally, the Dutch Caribbean islands are now facing a delay in resolving the de-risking issue facing banks in the Caribbean. According to Minister of Finance Richard Gibson, the Dutch Caribbean islands have been asked by the U.S. to get assistance first from the Dutch government before a solution can be pursued on this matter. America had expressed its interest together with the Dutch islands as well as Jamaica to use the Dutch islands and Jamaica as an example to the world as to how de-risking should be approached. Uh, however, they also require that the Netherlands be on board to facilitate this process. All of the Dutch islands have agreed to go down this process. However, uh, the Netherlands uh, has some hesitation as far as it's concerned, and we're waiting for finalization of their decision to move forward with this. I should impress upon you that de-risking is extremely important to the welfare of our economy, the welfare of our people, and that uh, there should not be any hesitation whatsoever in pursuing the path to uh, eliminate this risk as far as the risk is concerned, it's hanging over our head. From that point of view, it's my hope that the Dutch will realize that this is of life importance to us and that they too will pick up the suggestion or proposal made by the United States to, be, to work together to make the Dutch islands as well as Jamaica an example as to how de-risking should be resolved, similarly to how it has been resolved for Mexico. This has been St. Martin Island Time TV News. I'm Andre Huey. Thank you for watching.